doing, Nigel? I'm good, and yourself? I'm hanging in there. I haven't seen you since UCLA and uh, the, the NIT. I was there. Oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah, oh, I was no. actually jumping. When you guys won, I was sitting right next to the bench, and my brother looked back and goes, come here, come here. And we just went and we jumped. I was with the team. We were jumping. Next thing I know, we're in center court. And all the girls were waving their pom-poms, and you guys were getting the, the award. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it was. It, we had so much fun that night. The only yeah. thing is, I wanted to stay and hang out, but my 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 brother goes, "No, no, go home." And I'm like, "Mine, my other brother's there. Watch my mom, and everything's great." And yeah, but it's it's great to see you. How you doing? I'm good. You know, uh, hanging in there like most folks, but uh, I'm happy to be alive, and you know, I'm in a good place. So it's it's uh, it's not as tough as. Like you hear some of the stories about others, man. So, uh, no, nah, I'm, I feel blessed. I'll, I'll just say that. Well, you have been blessed. I mean, you had a great, you had a great life. You were star at UCLA. You were McDonald's all American and you were great in college. You played for the Nets a little bit. I got drafted and I was on the roster, but I was inactive. I got hurt during the preseason, um, with the bullets, 1986, man. So, um, I never officially uh, played in, in any um, regular season games, but uh, uh -huh. I got injured a, a game against the Washington. Well, it was the Bullets back then, the, the Wizards now, but um, did some damage to my Achilles and my, um, I actually mm -hmm. ended up having stress fractures in there that I didn't know about. So mm -hmm. um, that kind of curtailed my career, not so much from a physical standpoint, but I found out that I had other interests, let's just say. Um, I'd say so. You did yeah. great. And, um, you know, I, I saw the true side of the business of basketball yeah. at a young, impressionable age. While, you know, coming from UCLA, you sort of see the best of everything. Even when it's bad, it, it's, it's, um, it's somewhat protected. Mm -hmm. So, you know, mm -hmm. it was um, yeah, interesting. So, it's, say the least. It's, so it sounds like you're kind of uh, glad that you're not doing basketball anymore, but movies more. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. Um, so you're really happy with the um, movies and the production and more than yeah. basketball. Yeah. Like I said, basketball was a, I won't say means to an end, but when you look at it, um, I was always very passionate and, and uh, committed and loved the game. But, um, you know, I made a somewhat of a business decision when I once I got injured and um, I could have come back to play or pursued it a little more. But, um, you know, I did the CBA route one year and um, was very successful there, but I, I didn't know if I had it in me to do it again, you know, if I had to. Right. And I, I, I made a decision to you know, use my notoriety from UCLA while my name still meant something. It can open some doors for me. Well, it sure, uh, does, as, it sure does mean something. I'll tell you. Yeah, as, a, as, as opposed to waiting around and, and then after you're somewhat considered washed up trying to do it. And if you don't succeed, then um, it just doesn't mean the same. Right. Um, now, do you still follow the game, Nigel? Oh, yeah. I, I still love the game and I do follow it and I appreciate the, um, you know, uh, what people have accomplished over the years. And um, I'm, it seems I'm a bigger fan of college sports now than, than professional sports. And, you know, I, I think a lot of that has to do with, um, well, in particular this past year, um, just with how the game looks, you know, it doesn't, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't look the same without the fans. Well, um, you would probably be an anomaly in today's game, Nigel. I mean, you were known as a defensive stopper. That, yeah, that's yeah, that's sure an outlier were. now. Yeah. <laughs> they don't they don't play defense much anymore, man. Or no, it's not it's, it's not a premium set on defense. So yeah, um, I don't know if my skill set would have been as valued as it was back then. Now, but the one thing I will say is that the game goes in cycles. Right. And I, I do believe that that's the move. That's the, the, the trend that you will start to see. Um, you you the, think those, it'll go those, back those the way it was? You think Maybe go not back? go back all the way, but th that skill set will become more valuable. I, guaranteed. Well, I'll, 
I'll tell you what, I believe it because when you play the game the right way, I mean, it's the right way. So sooner or later, the right's going to win. I mean, you would yeah. think anyway. No, 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 it, it will. But um, there have been changes that's been made to the game. So it's more entertaining. So it, it, right. it's more fan friendly. Uh, and, and that's all. Like I said, those are business decisions, but it might not be. The, like you said, the proper way to play the game. Right. No, I agree. See, I don't believe the three-point line, just chucking up threes every every time down is the right way to do it. No. I, I, I mean, and, and and how, like, the coaches don't have to coach. I mean, they're just saying, take more threes. That's not coaching. Yeah. And, and you know you what I'm saying? That. Yeah, oh, 100%. And you see that. Yeah. Uh, and then they always justify it with analytics. Yeah. You know? Right, right. Yeah. Will, will you, can we burn analytics, please? Can, can we get rid of it? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you 100% on that because analytics are, I don't know, they serve their purpose, but it's not at the end of the day, I, I, I don't believe that's the true test of what works and what doesn't. Absolutely. And, and you know, they you can take any stat and twist it your way and make it legitimate in your mind or, or justified. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. I, you, you know should, what? Yeah. The, the players like Steph Curry, have turned the basketball world upside down. So yeah, but right. there's, there's, there's only one Steph Curry. So that's where his greatness comes into play. But, you know, if uh, like I said, every era has its way of playing. Mm -hmm. And I just don't believe that we could sustain this way of playing and keep a good level of basketball that's for the right. future. You know, I, I had a discussion with, with like, a, I go to the pizzeria and this 15 year old kid always serves me the pizza. And I happened to mention, go, the league is terrible today. It's not playing the right way. And he just looked at me and went, well, you can think that, that's your opinion. I go, no, no, you don't understand. <laughs> I've seen back then and I'm still here now. I yeah. see it now. It's definitely dropped off. It's not the right way to play the game. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, you, yeah. you can't be having a five on one and three of the five guys pulling up from three. The three, On a fast yeah. break. With the game on the line and you down one point and many times it happens. It's unbelievable. Yeah, and, and, and you don't really need a three to win at that point. But That's the right. mindset is, you know, you, you just – you pro, your program, so you, you pull up. And, yeah, it looks nice when you make it, but right. I, I, I would take that layup or that mid-range game. If I only need two to win, yeah, you know, but, hey. Uh, Who do you like to win it all this year? Oh, sorry, Nigel. Who do you no, like no, to no, win no. it all this year? Well, I'm kind of biased, somewhat biased. I am a Laker fan, and – I always say that you never bet against a healthy LeBron. Yeah. Um, or a Davis he, for that matter. <laughs> well, I, I, I love Anthony Davis, but Le, LeBron is the key man. Because right, you plug course. him in and then he does make everyone better. But if, if, if I could take my bias out of it, there are some teams that I like or I would like to see really step up if it's not going to be my Lakers. And mm -hmm. we can start in the West. I like Utah and Phoenix. Mm -hmm. um, Phoenix Utah, is interesting. They're a good team. Yeah, yeah. Utah is, is a solid team, uh, and they actually have – they can beat you more than one way. Mm -hmm. While I would say with Phoenix, the only way they win is if Chris Paul is healthy, and I still don't know if that's enough to get them over, but they will right, be in the right. conversation. Right. Uh, I look at someone like Denver mm -hmm. uh, with that injury they just had. I, I, I think that even with the trades that they made um, before the deadline, uh, with Murray going down, I just don't feel that that they will get over. <clears throat> over I heard the other night, right? Yeah. Uh, so you know that that's what I see. Those are those are my choices. If the Lakers can't get it, I see coming in. Um, what do you feel about the Nets? What do you think about them? Well, then, I, yeah, I was going to go to the East. I, I believe the Nets are the team to beat, even though the Lakers are the defending champs. Right. Now, they just lost someone who I thought that would have helped them. Aldridge. Yeah, in the, in the playoffs. Because um, right. when you have that amount of firepower, it allows for your guys to be off. And then someone who wasn't getting that much, that, those many looks, can actually step up that night. And that's where an Aldridge who can give you 30 still on any given night sure. might not be called to do it on, on, on the nightly, but those nights he, he can still put it down. I, right. I think uh, he will be missed, but 
as long as the Nets don't um, start bickering amongst themselves, they're going to be hard to beat, man. Right. Well, they definitely have the team, and Kevin's tough, so, you know. Yeah, and and and, and, and a healthy Durant. Right. I, yeah, I, <laughs> he made, as, as, as good as Golden State was with, with, with the Splash Brothers, yeah, he, he made that team better, <laughs> you know, a team of the decades, you know, those, those type, those great teams sure. uh, adding him. Yeah. And, you know, with Draymond and all the other pieces that they had. But, um, hey, man, they're going to be tough to beat. Let's just say. Yeah, they're going to be and real what, tough to beat. And, and going to your playing time, what was your favorite and least favorite moment as a basketball player? I would say my favorite moment as a basketball player, I've had a few, but um, I'll just kind of touch on a couple of them and then I can explain a little more. Um, being selected to the McDonald's All-American team. Sure. And uh, the reason why it was just, like, it was a significant moment, not only in basketball, but in, in my life, just because of what that meant back in those days and specifically to, to, to me or, or, or the players that made it. Um, going to UCLA, receiving a scholarship there. Uh, Over USC, you picked us? I, yeah, I, 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 I liked SC just because I liked Coach Morrison. I don't know if that name rings a bell, Stan Morrison. Sure. Yeah, and, and the, the, the coach that actually recruited me to UCLA, Larry Brown, had left to go yeah. coach the Nets. Who we're trying so, to get on. Uh, we actually yeah. tried to, and we kind of missed a uh, step, but he's going to come on. So. Okay, yeah, Coach Brown, he's one of my favorite people even mm -hmm. to this day. Um, someone who is a coaching genius. Yeah, he is. yeah he's, he is. Just, he's, he's remarkable, man. And just um, as a young, impressionable kid, just watching him, how he communicates with his players and how he just gets the best out of him. Mm -hmm. um just just an amazing amazing person man and, and someone who i like i said who i love to this day um and then some of the uh then i would have to put draft day and all that kind of stuff some of the just worst memories of basketball the hardest stuff uh one being cut or mm -hmm. waved those, those those are difficult mm -hmm. because sure. that's a uh a certain reality that you have to deal with. Um, being injured was one uh, because, sure. you know, I, I was so close to reaching my dream. And then I always remember um, riding back on the bus because we played, when I got hurt, it was up in uh, the gym in Hershey, Pennsylvania, wow. uh, where Will actually scored the, scored 100, the 100 points. points. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I got injured in that gym. Um, and riding back on the bus and going to the emergency uh, that night, once we got back from there, and just feeling lonely, you know, just weird, just like I said, in the middle of the night, uh, early morning, uh, checking in uh, and being there in the emergency and just waiting for them to look at my foot and just, you know, all kinds of things. I, I that, those are those are vivid memories, even though that's like thirty something years ago. Um, <laughs> Sure. And, and, and just, you know, just, just the, the, the harshness and the reality of the business of sports. Let's just say that those, yeah. those are some of the tough times. Yeah. When you, or worst, worst times. when you took the net, when you signed with the Nets for two years originally, right. Mm -hmm. You could have took the Lakers and you would have won it because they won it that year. Yeah. But and you turned them down. Well, it's, See, but the type of deal that I had, I had some some uh, upfront money with the Nets, um, you know. Yeah, they yeah I figured it was money. that. Yeah, yeah, and then the Lakers. I oh, trust me. In all honesty, if the Lakers would have just given me anything, man, you would have been I there. I would have been there. But it was a make good contract, <laughs> and I had played well with them that year in the summer league. And uh, right. it's just just interesting. Uh, a gentleman showed me some photos from that summer league and he had a, a one photo of Pat Riley and I talking <laughs> and I was like, where in the heck did you get this man? You know? Right. Um, and those kind of things that I, that's the beauty of sports. When those things, a, a photograph triggers 
a memory that that's been hidden for like 30 years or 20 years or whatever it is it just right. pops back and, and and it's fresh in your mind but right. um you know an la kid man playing for the lakers that's true and and boy that team was great we had jamal wilkes on we want to get him on because people forget who he is. He was pretty good. Uh, great, great, <laughs> great player. Yes, but he was. He was always a, a, a great player or a very good player on great teams. Yeah. So he somewhat always gets overshadowed, but he has wonderful sure stats. Enough. I mean, yeah. he has the credentials. Obviously, he's in the hall, but he has yeah. the credentials. But th those are the type of names, like you say, people forget. But true yeah. purists of the game don't know how great he was. And, and the players that played with him or against oh, him don't. Yes. Either he helped them or he torched them. Yes. And, and they never forget it. Well, that Magic's quote-unquote great night, which it was. Right, right. You, you look at Jamal's line. I know. 37 and 10. Come on, man. I know. Come on. Yeah, you know, that, um, you know, and, and, and what, what about this, the irony of that? That mm. game was tape delayed. I know. <laughs> if you didn't live in Philadelphia or Los Angeles, you didn't see it live. Yeah, we yeah, saw it eleven thirty at night after the news. Yes, yes, that is and, true. And, and, and that was the thing because yeah. my dad and I we watched it and we got a chance to watch it twice because the replay when it actually came on for everybody, yeah, that was. Um, look where the NBA has come from. That to, to, that's, to where I know. Now, and and yeah, <laughs> that is. And Magic and Bird had a lot to do with getting it out of that. Um, that oh my time. gosh. Yeah. From from that uh, finals, yeah, to you know, like they say, they 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 put the league on their backs um, along with David Stern, and you know did a masterful job of creating what we have now. And absolutely, you know, absolutely, it, it's, it's it's amazing. I, I can't tell you how. I tell my wife this all the time that anything good in my life, there's a basketball connection to it. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what mm -hmm. I, I try to share with kids uh, from all the time. And I'm like, the beauty of this game is obviously yeah, what's on the court. But when you really look at it, it's all the benefits that happen or could happen to you off the court if you open yourself up to receive it. That's exactly right. And, and that's a beautiful thing to say, because like a phoenix rising from the ashes, your career took off in an instant after those injuries. Sure I mean, your did. Your film career is is. Uh, is something to behold. I mean, blue chips, white man can't jump, American oh. History X. I mean, you name it. Uh, you I, really have had a quite a career, and it happened quick. I wish I could say I planned it. <laughs> you don't have to plan it. It was uh, meant to no be. Need. Yeah, yeah, yeah and you just it, did it. It's just a blessing. It, yep. it really is. I, yep. I'm a strong believer in God and, and me too. And spirituality, man, and yep. I just um, I've been very fortunate. To, to be able to take advantage of some, like just some great things and not knowing that they were going to be great at the time, but they become iconic over the years. Um, you know, I, I, as an 18 year old kid um, meeting MJ at the McDonald games and us being roommates and where my relationship with him over the years has, has, has taken me. Um, being his body double for seven years. I was going to ask you about that. You were his yeah, body just, double for seven. <laughs> you were I in his know, so, Some of the most, like I've been in some of the most outrageous situations that if you were to actually try to, like I said, to plan it or tell somebody, yeah. um, it, it would never work out that way. The, the experiences that I've had <clears throat> working with him or being associated with him and just you know, like I would say, the fall off of, of the life that he lives, you know, um, the access that I've gotten from working with Nike on, 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 on projects over the years, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. Did you work on Space Jam with him? Yeah, I was actually um, yeah. Space Jam. Uh, I was actually the basketball coordinator as well as the casting director. And yeah, I was on camera. Well. So Space Jam was an overwhelmingly successful venture for me. And like I said, it's nothing that I planned. Mm -hmm. uh, the director, uh, Joe Pitka, uh, a good friend of mine, and he knew of my relationship with MJ. So, you know, it was like, you know, you're going to be at my, um, you know, on my hip for the, for the, for the next three months. 
because we have to make this thing as seamless and comfortable for Michael. So sure. I was, uh, well, I, I wouldn't just say me. I, I had a, a, a partner, Nate, Nate Bellamy, that we helped coordinate and do everything. Yeah. So right. it, it was, it was twofold, but um, from beginning to end and, and the studio wanted everything perfect for Michael. So mm -hmm. they went above and beyond, um, you know, anything that, that, <laughs> that you would consider that they put out there for Hollywood royalty. They really made him feel comfortable and at home. Oh, of course. He's the big star. I got to tell you about that movie, though. I, I played basketball every single day from the time I was eating. Uh -huh. And I played it everywhere. A lot of times with the pros because of my brother in the NBA. Uh -huh. and a lot of times that. And they would call me Woody. Because I oh, would, yeah? you wouldn't think, oh, yeah. Because they, I wouldn't think I'd go out there and school people, and uh -huh. I would just sit there real friendly. Hey guys, what's up? You know, <laughs> and I'd go out and win the game. You know, and uh, yeah, it was it's so funny because I didn't realize you did it at first. And my brother told me, like, yeah, Nigel did it. Go, he did what? And and I actually did years later. I used to take a lot of people to games because I played with so many different people through the years, and we're all friends down the field. Uh -huh. One of the kids and his father, I took to a Nets game one night. I had passes for him. And he never forgot it. And he ended up becoming like a rapper. He was starting to get pretty big, but his dad was religious. So his dad talked him out of doing it. He was ready to sign a contract. So if you can watch the, the video hyphen one, they did it down uh, our courts and I'm playing in school and somebody down there. So okay. that's a true story. Oh, I'll, wow. I'll send you the text later on. Yeah, got the game winning shot, Dude. Bob. Well, Rob knows my friend, Rob, and I've known him for 10 years. We're doing the show. Yeah, together. You got the game winning shot. I got the game winning shot. It's on but, tape. but Rob also knows I'm a good player and a shooter. He knows that. But okay. I'm still I still haven't beat him in horse yet. I, uh, <laughs> I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> but, but you guys, you guys are better than me because you're still playing. Oh, yeah. Well, well, I'm playing. Yeah. sore. I got bad back. Bad leg, I, I'm bad paying arm. the price for playing lately. I tell you what. <laughs> yeah. Two, yeah. Two patella tears later. Oh, I'm taking yeah. a break. <laughs> you, wow. You. Um, oh, yeah. You know what? So I ended up um, going to broadcasting school, worked at ESPN for a year and a half as an, as an intern. And then I, at, that at that time, my friend called me, goes, what did you want to do when you were 18? I go, act. My dad used to take me to the acting school. And it turned out that I ended up, ended up in four movies. He submitted me without telling me. I was actually in Men in Black 3. Um, I did uh, Queen Latifah's movie, Just Right. Okay. And it was an NBA yeah. movie. And we got to shoot around yeah, with the yeah, players. Yeah. And like people are looking at me going, how's this kid making them? I go, just like when I was a little kid. It's like all over again. But that is true. Uh huh. And it, and how about the highs and lows of your career in film? What's what's there to share? Um, highs and lows. I haven't had many low points, but I could I can tell you highs because like, as far as films go, those those are like blessings, man. Like I said, I I had lows in basketball because I had an expectation. Um, and when those expectations weren't met, that's the, those were the lows, you know. But in, in, in films, this isn't something that I, that I plan to do. So all of my it's, – it's, it's hard to find the lows. Maybe, maybe when you, uh, you audition for a part and you feel that you deserved it or you should have gotten it and you don't, maybe that's – that I could – that a low, um, but you know, film has taken me all around the world. I've, I've, I've almost every country or every con on every continent. Let's just say not every country, but on every continent um, in the world, and it's all been because of again basketball. Um, huh. I, I mean, one of like my biggest. I'll give you one quick story. One of my biggest uh, excitement ha has been uh, or was that I filmed in South Africa. Um, and I, I viewed Nelson Mandela's home. Um, I, I met, actually met the president of the country at that time. All of this because I was there on a movie that Disney was doing with Kevin Bacon called The Air Up There. And Right, I've heard know, that movie. Yeah, we, it, it, it was an amazing experience. And, you know, like I said, I, I didn't know what to expect, but I, I, I went there to, to, to do a film. And out of that film, just like some wonderful relationships have come from it and the experiences that, that I had, 
changed my life and they're still affecting me now because some of those relationships, I was able to piggyback and use them to further business opportunities uh, on or in front of the camera and behind, and then just other opportunities that um, I would have never got a chance to do, would have never experienced uh, if, if, if that opportunity, the, 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 the film industry wasn't there. And was, oh, sorry. I'm sorry, the, the, the biggest thing was that the film industry, that has allowed me to become the film commissioner of my country. Yeah, you're the and film commissioner. Those, those are the, like that, that's major to me, not so much because of what it does for me personally, but it allows me to affect the lives of young people that want to do and have the talent, but not, might not have the opportunity. So those, those are like the highlights of when you say a film career or, or um, building the, the, the industry. Now, my brother went to Belize with you some years yeah. ago to help you out. What was that about? Yeah. Tony Spino's well, my brother, in case nobody knows. Yeah. Um, you see <clears throat> uh, Spino. Yeah, that, <laughs> we affectionately just called him Spino, but... Um, your brother's an amazing dude, man. I yeah, mean, he um, yeah, he, he is. has he's, he's done so much for so many people, uh, and I, I mean specifically for for me. Um, I I'll tell you one story that led into why and how he came back to Belize. Um, my senior year, uh, they they did a, a an eye test on me and they found that that, that I needed contact lenses and stuff. Right. I had an issue with putting the lenses in my eye before the game. Mm -hmm. Your brother used to come in there and put the put put my lenses in for every game and practice for me. Right. Um, took the time and and you know really made me feel comfortable. And I, I I tell you that because yeah he he was the trainer, but those are things that kind of go beyond uh, your job description. You know what I mean. Right. In saying that, um, your bro has worked with me on numerous projects, and this project here, he came back to Belize. We were doing uh, some NBA players, uh, current and retired players, and um, I, just, I just asked Bean to come with, and if he would teach, uh, yeah, take care of the, 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 the guys, but sort of teach our trainers back here in Belize uh, for that week. And, and, and kind of, you know, bring their game up. And so th that's what he did. Yeah. You know what? I tease my brother a lot and we get on each other's case a lot, but I do know he's one of the best at what he does. There's oh, yeah. no doubt about it. I hate to admit it, but, but it's true. <laughs> no, no, no. It's true, man. It's true. You're not, uh, you're not bragging. You're just telling the truth. Yep. Yep. And you, you just did a commercial with my brother, right? You put him in a commercial. Yeah. It's for this um, a product um, called Stemmergen. And right. it's 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 a lifestyle uh, mm -hmm. product, but it, it, it's actually a stem cell enhancer that's um, plant based. Mm -hmm. So oh, pl if you, yeah, if 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 you know a little, so it's bit not about from your own body. Cell, it's not from your own body. Well, the stem cells are from your own body. Okay, cool. The the the, the capsules that you take, um, uh, the capsules that you take enhance that. They, they actually rejuvenate and build. So um, it, it, it's, it, I hate to get on here and become a salesman, but. Um, no, no. Sell it, away because I might to, need some for my patella tears. Yeah, I, I do. I, know, I, I need one for my knee, my hand, my back. You got it. It's interesting that you said that because I, I, I kind of hope that the conversation got to this, but um, the, the product, whatever injuries or um, shortcomings you have on the inside, it enhances because everything that 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 we have or that we use, uh, our, our our bodies, it, stem cells is what makes us do what we do. The problem is as we get older, we start to rejuvenate less of them mm -hmm. and duplicate less of them as 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 as, as we age. So yeah. this 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 product that that that. Um, Tony's uh, was a was a part of and spoke about is something that you know 
I, I, I hate to sound cliche as what you say, you know, the fountain of youth, but it actually rebuilds you from the inside out. That's the best not, way to go. That is the and best it's way not to go. Anything that, it's not anything that gives you um, that jolt, that feeling, oh, I feel like the Energizer Bunny, and then, you know, <laughs> a few hours later, you're moping around, you're down. No. <laughs> it, it is a gradual build of feel good. And, oh, and we'll definitely be putting things. the links to Stem Regen on there. I found it. Uh, I, I'm ordering some myself. Yeah, please. And please we'll put the link, links. Man. And um, yeah, I, I already said, I already told my brother, if you can send some home, please do. Because yeah, my back and arm and everything need the help. Well, his his deal, he should have some as, as part of his deal. So right. it, it, again, it, it's something that, um, you know, for, for men, especially, let's just say we need it. You know, as, yeah. as we get older, yeah, yeah. and it, it's incredible. You know, it really is. And and there 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 are some um, claims that you know people that with diabetes, it's it's actually uh, uh, affected their blood sugar levels. Different really, kind of th th these aren't uh, claims that um, Stemergen is that are making, but people that have taken it that are on it have said that. You know, so um, no kidding. Yeah, it, it, again, your stem cells are what affect you as a human being. So if you can enhance that, it will enhance all aspects of your life. That's awesome. And, and by the way, folks, we did not have, we, we did not do this purposely. This is not an informal. I brought this up because my brother was in the commercial. So what Nigel's telling you is the absolute truth. Yeah. So. Yeah. And you'll find the links below as well and hashtag film Belize as well. Yes. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, well, well, yeah, film Belize, that, 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 that is my, my thing. There it is. And it's, 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 yes. our, it's our mantra here in the country. Um, we, we're trying to create a, um, a mindset that will build Belize as the place to come, the place for media in Central America slash the Caribbean. Um, My brother I've loved been, it there. He told me it was awesome. I asked him about it. Yeah, well, you know, they, 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 Spino got the VIP treatment, you know, so he... he uh, what else? What yeah, else? Yeah. He, he had a good time, man. He, he had a right. good time. And we enjoyed having him here. Right. Now, who else was in the commercial with my brother? This part of the commercial had Marcus Johnson. Right. Um, who we're getting on. Yeah, as he uh, lines up his, and I'm crossing my fingers, that he gets inducted this year. He's a finest again to the, to the right. hall. Right, that's what he said. He goes after the hall thing. He's going to come on. He just is waiting. Okay, to... yeah. And yeah, I yeah. think now they're saying that they're going to make the announcement in May because of <laughs> mm -hmm. the whole COVID uh, pandemic adjustment. And then um, Mitchel Butler. Who, was who a, we had on? U UCLA. Oh, you had Mitch on too? Oh, he was great. We had yeah, so much Mitch fun with is, Mitch. Mitch is awesome, man, and Mitch, uh, you know, he's so good at what he does. He sure, he's you know? smart. He's a chess yeah. player. If ever I saw one, yeah, yes, yeah. So I, I, um, I appreciated his involvement, and then myself, and then we had some some other names. I, I, I have to be somewhat biased because I tried to make this UCLA centric as much as possible. <laughs> That's okay. I'm but UCLA. Still, yeah. I'm UCLA. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I but, just remind um, the whole world that I, you know, Syracuse right here. So, <laughs> oh, I, 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 I'm, I'm, went to I, I love the Orange Man. One of my uh, nearest and dearest nice. friends, Stevie Thompson. Oh, um, Stevie Thompson, absolutely. Man. Yeah, he broke my heart when he when he chose uh, Syracuse over one of the LA schools. Oh, but um, Stevie should have yeah. had a title. I've known for Stevie. I've known um, Stevie since. I mean, we actually went to elementary school together. Wow. Um, so I've, he's been a part. And actually, when when um, Tony came back to Belize on that trip, Stevie was a part of that trip as well. Interesting. You know, and Stevie looks like he has looks like he has a son that that uh, might be a first rounder. Absolutely. Wow. He's a star. Yeah. Absolute star. I don't know. Yeah. I wish he came to Syracuse, but yeah, he's a star. Yeah. Well, I, I think that was part of the deal. So wherever Stevie ended up coaching, that's where it's <laughs> that's where <laughs> that's where uh, Ethan, I think his name yeah. Ethan or Ethan. He had a great Ethan. tournament. Yeah. He had, well, he had two. He has two. I, I think Ethan 
It was either the Ethan and Ethan or the, the, or the two sons. I don't know which is which, though. But um, yeah, what well, one of them plays for Oregon State, and he was a star, and he had a great yeah, tournament. And the, the other one just recently graduated. Uh, okay, because I I do remember they both went to Oregon State, basically. So, but yeah, but the one that just uh, finished up, yeah, he's a bona fide star. He's he's a solid. I I believe will be a solid pro. What was your favorite movie to work on? Mm. Wow, a lot of highs. Yeah, man, because all of all of them. Well, I would tell you one that that's uh, then for different reasons. I'll give a one and a one eight. Let's just say that works. There, there, there's a small movie that was on HBO called. Um, Well, it's called The Angel of Harlem was a working title. And I think that, um, but it's the Earl Manigold story. I was going to say, was, was it the Earl story? Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> and um, the original guy that, that had the rights was a um, director, producer director now by the name of DJ Caruso. He's, he's a kid from back east, came out to school at Pepperdine on a tennis scholarship. But he's actually a decent basketball player. But um, but he didn't play. He played tennis. He didn't play D1 basketball. But I've, I've known DJ because he was actually good friends with um, Jim Herrick. Mm. I know that, know that name rings a bell. Well, we've had him on, too. Absolutely. OK, Jim Herrick. Yeah. And I've known Coach Herrick since I mean, he Coach Herrick used to coach at um, Morningside High School. Right. And I was a, a young, young kid, but um, I attended the camp there and, and, you know, just met Coach Herrick and just through, his, through the years, the family, Jim Jr. and everybody, they really connected me with DJ. And we have been talking about this Earl Madigal project for like years. And every time he thought he was close to getting it made, something happened. Mm. And so I rode that journey with him. And to actually see that being made, we actually shot that in Toronto. Um, and I, 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 I was in it a little bit, but I did all the basketball and the casting. And I was able to put Kevin Garnett in the movie and Joe Smith. Yeah. That, yeah, that, 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 yeah, yeah. He was uh, like what, Gar- top, top pick in the league at one time, wasn't he? Joe Smith was. Um, one. Joe Smith ended up playing Connie Hawkins, I believe. And Kevin okay. Garnett played Will Chamberlain. No way. Yeah. Well, so, you know what? I it's about a legend, a, a street legend, right? Exactly. And all these yeah, yeah. guys played, you know, in 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 in, in the Rutger and all that. And right. that Rucker movie, Park, yeah. that movie, you know, because of my involvement with it, um, from just the genesis of it to the actually seeing it made, that mm-hmm. was like a fifteen year journey, you know, um, and then. So that that that's like my honorable mention, and then the, my my one and one A is Space Jam and White Man Can't Jump. White right. Man all can't time jump. classics. Yeah, White Man Can't Jump is. I mean, to this day, I I get people quoting me lines from that movie. And this yeah. is 20, 20 <laughs> 30 years after the fact. Forever ago, now. right? Yeah, right. And and it's still and it's just had such an impact. On the global, we're going to Sizzlers. <laughs> yeah, all, all those lines. We're man. Going, and, I, and- I, I was in France, and this was like about 10, 15 years ago, when the Bulls played the um, in the McDonald's uh, game with the NBA. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, again, that was part of my Michael Jordan body double stuff. We were filming a commercial there for him, so they brought me over, yeah. you know, to do. Because a lot of times you, you would get Michael... For like four to six hours that's the max mm-hmm. so whatever you have in the commercial to do with him mm-hmm. you have to shoot within that time right so a sure. lot of times sure. when you're looking at the back of the head the arm this to that a lot of times that was me but anything face frontal this or that that was mj and we, wow we we coordinated down to those type of um okay you you, you get your uh your, your shot charts 
and you break it down. These are definitely MJ. These are we're going to use Nigel for. All the stuff, so the movements, all that. So when MJ would actually come in to do his thing, he would sit down with me and we'd go over this, this, and that. And then he jumps right into it. So wow. that, 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 that's 1A. And then obviously Space Jam, just, you know, though that to, to me, and again, I'm somewhat biased. I, I don't really know if there'll ever be a bigger basketball movie than that. Space now, Jam? Space Jam 2. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. Space Jam. Are, are you on the set for that? Thing. Are you, you on know, the set for Space Jam 2? I tried to get on, and mm-hmm. for some reason, it just never worked. And I do have a relationship with LeBron and, and his guys. Wow. But it just, it just never worked out. And I, and I kind of believe that they kind of wanted to disassociate themselves from anybody that really had a connection to the first one. Wow. So, I, so uncool. I, well, I... It's not, I don't look at it as un- uncool. I, I get it because this is his creative take on the first Space Jam. Yeah. yeah, so I, I'm like, okay. But I, I do believe that this will be successful and extremely successful. I'm sure it will. Because of the timing and what uh, was able to be accomplished, nothing like that had ever really been done before. That's why I always put like Space Jam to give it the edge. It's the original, man. You know, uh, that's right. And, and yeah. you know what? The, the thing about originals, especially when you have Jordan there, the remakes are very hard to be good or successful as the first one. It's and, really tough. And, and I do believe that's why Michael never did a another one, mm-hmm. because they trust me. They loaded up the Brinks truck and were trying to get him to do it. And as somebody that would have benefited from that. I kept asking, said, come on, man, please, please. One you know, more but, time. One more time. Yeah. Yeah. Which, hey, you know, man, it, it's, um, it's, you it, know what? It didn't happen and it didn't happen for the right reasons, I guess. I guess so. Yeah. You know, the, so, the white man can't jump. I got to tell you, there's one more funny scene when Marcus was trying to rob the store. And at the end, the guy's like, I know who you are. And he goes, now you're robbing me. <laughs> it yeah. was so funny. <laughs> That was the, that was and, funny. And you, know, you know that was based somewhat. The core of that was based off of a true story. Is that right? Yeah. Now, obviously, Hollywood did its little creative uh, yeah. maneuvers or whatever, but the core of that story was a true, true story from a gentleman that we all know um, by the name of Lewis Brown. Uh, God rest his soul. He's passed away now, but mm-hmm. it, it the scenario. It really happened. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so. No, no, you were in that movie, right? Were, were you yes. in the basketball scenes when they were playing in the beginning? I was in the basketball scenes. We actually lost, my partner and I, Dwayne Martin, we actually lost to Woody and Wesley wow. in the championship of the Brotherhood <laughs> Tournament. Uh, oh, no. Whatever. Yeah. That, that so. loss must stick forever. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Trust me. We used to go back and forth with Woody and Wesley. And Woody was always, now the script says you guys lose. So in reality, you've lost. I don't care what anybody else says, you lost. <laughs> and those those guys, I, I, it was an amazing experience working with them, man, because, yeah, you know, at that point, Woody was a star. He wasn't a big star yet, but he had cheer. Cheers, right. He was doing some, some things. And then, obviously, Wesley had just come off of New Jack City and mm-hmm. had, had done some other things. So the, the buzz on that set, man, that was an incredible summer, um, hanging out with those dudes. You know, I got introduced to a whole different A-list people in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. They got introduced to, you know, the hoop game. And, and right. um, those guys would actually come up to UCLA or, or we'd inter- in, intermingle with them. So it was a good mix, you know. Right, right. Now, you, you did Blue Chips, too. Um, you yeah. had a lot of stars on your like the movies that, you know, you did. I mean, um, Forget Paris had Billy Crystal. Blue Chips had Nick Nolte. Um, yeah. And of course, you know, um, Space Jam had Jordan. Um, did you like, what were they all like? I mean, I know Jordan. I met Jordan. I actually yeah. did. You know, but um, what about these say, other guys? Well, Billy Crystal was a sweetheart. Mm-hmm. Very knowledgeable about the game. Love baseball too. Love the Yankees. Love the, he, he loves sports because yes. boxing. You can sit there and talk to him about <laughs> it. Billy anything. Crystal like the Mets, Bob. 
No, he was a Yankee fan. The Yankees? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, oh. he, he did 61 with the Maris thing, the home run. Yeah, home very knowledgeable year. about sports. Mm-hmm. And, and, and especially anything to do with New York sports. That's that we, we can we can put it put that bow on it because right. he would sit there and talk to you during during the break. Um and then just just enjoyed sharing his knowledge. Yeah. And and that went beyond, you know, the obvious stuff of him just being a great actor. Um Nick Nolte, and when you talk about blue chips, uh yeah. just an incredible giving soul as well, a bit of a prankster. <laughs> you know, uh he was a longtime actor. He used to be on Rich Man Poor Man years ago. There it is, right there. And right. and and want to be one of the guys. So he right. would hang out and you know. He, he he enjoyed his uh, celebrity status. Let's just say, right? Yeah, right. Um, and obviously, MJ is MJ, and um, you know, the thing that I, I would say, and and I know MJ a whole lot better than than I know those guys. I I always tell people that ask me about Michael. I I say, uh, love him, hate him, like him, dislike or whatever. He is the most consistent person that I've ever been around that really doesn't have to be consistent. Um, He will never ask you to do anything that he isn't willing to do for you. That's awesome. Yeah, it, it, it it really is, man. And, and um, like I said, in, in space jam, uh, I'll, I'll share a story with you. He, he had asked one of the guys, um, to, to, to like, do you mind doing this? And and he, he didn't say, do you mind? He said, would you do this? And it was like, sweep something. And then he turned around. Here it is. Everybody's here because of him. He turned around and said, he said, I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just asking you. He said, you can say no to me. I, I, I'm just asking you because we're doing something else. Mm-hmm. And I was like, to, to myself, I said, man, you don't have to, 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 to do that. That's what he's here for, you know? Right. If so, you ask him to do something, yeah, he, he'll do it. But he, he was always conscious of that. Mm-hmm. And, and that, that always struck a chord with me, man. You know, you know that, so basically he didn't want to act like he was the big shot, like he was just one of the crowd. Yeah, but, but right. shit, you are the big shot, you know? Well, he knows. It, that he knows. Yeah. That he knows. You know, so but it, it, but it's it, great that he never brought it out. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And um, I... Those are the type of things. Those are like intimate moments that 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 I've shared with him over the years, um, like when the cameras are off or and when the you know what I call downtime, mm-hmm. and you actually get to see the real person. Yeah, you know. And I got to um, tell you, um, right after you left UCLA, <clears throat> my brother um, North Carolina was playing the Bruins opening night, and we were supposed to open the Dean Dome, but it wasn't ready yet. So I said to my brother, I'd like to come down. I have a feeling he's going to be at the game, Michael, mm-hmm. because he had broken his foot. Yeah. And, and, you know, my brother ended up getting me permission to sit on the bench. And I was, you know, young and I had this long UCLA mm-hmm. jacket. I got to keep pulling it up. But Michael was on the other bench and I walked over to him long before the game started. <clears throat> and I said, hey, Mike, um, do you mind if you would sign his book? And he did. And we started talking a while. I said, how's your foot? And he goes, oh, it's, it's, I'll be fine. Believe me. I go, I go, sometimes you break a foot, you know, you never know. And he goes, people get scared or afraid to jump because he used to jump really high. Yeah. Especially back then. And because uh, he was still young. And he goes, no, no, I'll be better than ever. And, you know, so he signs it. And I start to walk away and he calls me back. He goes, come here, man, for a minute. And then he thought I was a player because mm-hmm. I was in guard, you know. And then he goes, good luck in your basketball career. And I went. Hmm. No, good luck in your basketball career. <laughs> but yeah. he was he he's so down to earth and he cares about other people. You're so right. He does. He does. He's a great person. He does, man. I and, loved and, him. And he beat the Knicks, which I love. I hate the Knicks. <laughs> you hate the Knicks? Oh, I do. I'm a Celtic fan. I grew up a Celtic. When I was a little kid, the Knicks and the, the Knicks were rivals with Boston. Right. Even before Larry Bird, back yeah, when they were yeah. really good. Yeah. And I had those nightmares of Boston going in there and that crowd screaming, defense, defense. That's where it came from, the Knicks fans back then. Right. People don't know that. Yeah. And I used to get scared sitting at home well, watching. I don't know how the players didn't get scared. But, yeah. I, 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 um, I am a long-time Knicks fan. 
Are you? Uh, oh yeah, man. The, the the weird thing when when we left Belize, right? Um, well, a little history. My father um, went to school back in New York before he went to UCLA. So when he would come back to Belize, those were the stories that I heard as a young kid. You know of new york and yeah it was wild know, the knicks and oh yeah all, all this kind of and, stuff and i live close to there it's not far yeah from so where i lived i used to romanticize about Garden. That, you know and then when we first left belize the cheapest plane ticket was to new york i don't know why or whatever so we actually flew there and, and stayed there for a little while and then came to los angeles where it was what was home well, in 85, you got to play at the garden. And I got to tell you, yeah. I got to tell you about that. My brother and I talk about this all the time. Reggie got the MVP because we did win the NIT and you beat Louisville, Indiana in the finals. And Louisville won the championship the next year, I believe. The next the NCAA year. Tournament, and then, right? Yeah. And then Indiana won it the year after. The year after that, right? Yeah. And, and yeah. But, but, but you know what? My brother told me he thought you should have got MVP of that final four because as good as Reggie was, you were the star of the team. You played the best in that tournament. And well, Reggie got all I, the points, but you deserve the trophy. I, I, I think from, from that, I mean, I still made no the offense, Reggie. team. No offense, Reggie. No offense, we no, still no, want you no, no. And, and, and um, uh, I, I still made the all-tournament team. Right. You and, sure did. And um, the, the fact that, um, you know, it came down to, to, to whatever or however they judged, um, Reggie had a better overall tournament than me. I just, for some reason, uh, I just started to score more once we got into the final four. You um, sure did. You sure but, did. Um, the, and the you were the point guard. You games, set us up. Yeah, coach. But coach was telling me, "You got to take care of this. You got to stop this." You, you know, um, the the right. other players because right. I was always, regardless Guard. of the size, unless it was a center, I you was were guarding guard. the best player. Yeah, and mm-hmm. and. Um, Reggie, even back then, you know, he was a remarkable scorer, remarkable shooter, and actually a very fierce rebounder for someone his size. Right. Um, oh, Reggie was tough, yeah. I, I always remember that, that week in, in, um, in New York, and that, that, that's the beauty of that, that NIT, man. You actually get to be a part of that, the New York culture and just, just feel it. The greatest week of my life, man. When it comes to hmm. basketball, it was it was one the of the NIT funnest final weeks. four was the great, best week of your basketball career. That's amazing. Of the, the not not just uh, the 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 games, but I'm just talking yeah, about the whole time, the whole experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the the things that we did, um, the 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 history behind the NIT, all the you know, Bill Raftery would come to the to the practices. <laughs> How great is the I mean, Raft? He's great. Yeah, he, he, he. I'm sure he did it for all the team, but I can only speak about when he sat down with us and would come in and you know, talk and stuff and learning about him because there there, there was a, a UCLA alumni who is good friends with Raftery, and so he kind of told Bill to, uh, he said, uh, look out for Nigel when he's there, and um, you know, the first day he comes in to watch us at at a practice. And I, I can't remember the gym that we were at, but we weren't in the um, in the garden. We were practicing something. And he yells out to me, he says, Marty Danzig says to, that I'm supposed to look out for you, Nigel. Give me something to look out for. You know, and he just, <laughs> just started. It was, it was just a great intro. And then, like you said, Raftery, man. He was the best. He, yeah, man. He's a, <laughs> I think he's a great announcer. Yes, yeah. I, I think he's a great announcer, too. I really do. Yeah, yeah, but but you look at his history. Yeah, right. His impeccable he's a good player, coach. Yeah, yeah, he's done it all. Similar to you know maybe yeah. not to the extreme that like John Wooden, but that right. same thing. He was a player, he was a coach, and he right. excelled at everything. Now he's yes, an announcer. Yes, he did. You know, yes, he's still did. sharp. He's amazing. still great. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So we that, love him. Well, yeah, he is. Um, like I said, he, he's one of the jewels that you guys have back there, and then you guys treat him very well, man. Yes. So, so you must have really loved playing at the Garden when you played that weekend. It was a dream come true. Yeah. And yeah. and we had played earlier in that year, 
mm-hmm. and kind of got embarrassed by uh, St. John's. Right. And, I was at and, that and, game. And coach, and you know what's so weird about that? Yeah. Um, we had just come off of a like a real tough loss to uh, BYU, and yep. a bunch of stuff happened in that game. Reggie got suspended, didn't coach, didn't play him the first half, and here it is, a huge national TV game uh, against you know St. John's, and they had Chris Mullen, Walter Berry, um, Mark Mark Jackson, Willie Glass. Uh, geez, I think Sheldon Jones was also a freshman on that team. Bill Whittington. I mean, they were Bill, stacked. Right. Stacked. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and, and I knew those guys because Bill and Chris we were on the McDonald's All-American team together. So, right. you know, uh, when you when 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 you play against guys that you have some history with, you know, it, you, you always try to bring out. And while I had a good game. We got embarrassed, man. And I remember coach getting on that bus and said, yeah, you know, you guys have to have more pride. I don't care if somebody's more talented than you are. You got to play hard. And he got, I remember saying, if I ever come back to New York, you know, I'm going to be victorious. It's not going to go down. He was, he was hurt. He was embarrassed. And I think what hurt him more than anything, he didn't feel that we were as embarrassed or hurt to the level that he was. Interesting. And, and you know, my brother still loves the NIT to this day. He was going to come home last year if the flu didn't hit because, mm-hmm. because both the NCAA and the NIT was going to play at the garden and he had, he was going to come home, stay with me. We were going to go. Yeah, there, yeah. Even as a fan, there's nothing like watching the game of the garden with your team playing yeah. and the whole ambiance around the bars around awesome. the corner. It's great. It's and, awesome. Yeah. And you know, he always liked the NIT because at one time that was the big thing. More yeah, that was the, yeah, that was the tournament. That was the tournament. Yep. And, and he loved being there in 85. We had so much fun. But it was just amazing. Yeah, that, that, yeah that's home. You guys, uh, you yeah. know, right. doing your thing and all that. But, <laughs> yeah, it, I, 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 I enjoyed my time. Um, right. Obviously, the fact that we won, you know, made it even that much more uh, of an enjoyable experience. But, right. um, yeah, college sports, man, I – it's something that you wish, I won't say everyone, but most players or, or let's say ball players could experience that. Um, this is unbelievable. Right. Absolutely. I mean, Roger, I, you got time for one more question or two? Yeah. Yeah. I got a little, little, little time. I, I got some other stuff I have to do, but I'm enjoying myself, man. This, oh, thank well, you. Glad to hear. Awesome. And you got to open it in by any time. So yes, we want you to come back. back, whatever. We sure well, will. I, I, I would like to say one, one thing that um, we're going to be doing something during uh, the summer months where it put will me be in, a, put me another in, Put me thing. in. I did acting. <laughs> yeah. Well, not, well, no, no, no. I'm talking about for the show where oh. it will be sports and entertainment. And I would love to, to, coordinate something that we can bring everyone on oh, absolutely yeah. sure the more the merrier it, it would be a great show it, it, uh, on and, our show yeah yeah, yeah it would. and it would touch it would touch a couple of areas that um some old school some real old school but then some some current stuff we would and love it all, all the guys will be here in belize and you know it won't be the backdrop won't be my office it, it will be you know <laughs> maybe some some palm trees and the caribbean and well, if you're it, still it's friend- gonna be nice do you still see Michael? Are you still friends with him? I'm still friends. I haven't. The last time I physically saw him, Bring him on. was before the pandemic. Okay. You know. Yeah. But if you can, you can have that kind of a big thing where, and like if Mike says, yeah, we want you all on. Bring everybody on. Oh, I would, yeah. I, I would. We're, we're coordinating everything. So, um, yeah, it did. I'll, I'll coordinate it with it so so that there's ample time and we we can do it right and, oh, and once you enjoy. thank you yes yeah. and once we publish this show bob will send you the link and so you can share it with whoever they can see the show and the channel and all that but thank you i yes i would trust me we will uh blast it throughout the country of belize for sure uh we'll, all we'll right, promote belize. you anywhere you want to be promoted i got one hashtag more question. film belize yes sir uh, you did 21 jump street right yeah, that was yeah, a cool like, show. The kids, we, the kids were all cops on the street. We loved that show. Yeah, they actually did an episode with Kareem. You did where he was the athletic director, and um, I got a chance back 
to meet Johnny Depp, uh, oh. who was a huge star wow. back then. Right. Um, yeah, uh, that, that, that was, we shot that up in Vancouver, mm -hmm. um, British Columbia. And um, I know I, I, I have some, some, some great memories of some of them I forgot we didn't, you know, get time to talk about. But sure. um, no, it, it's, it's been a good journey. Uh, it's not over yet. Like I said, we're doing oh, some yeah. really, really big things here in the country. Sure. Uh, we've established uh, a film school here that we're just starting out. It's online right now, but it's going to be a brick and mortar film school with a, uh, the university here, um, Galen University. I'm going to join. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we actually start online courses for marketing and what is it? The first one is marketing. And then, then that's a six work, six week course it meets two times a week online. And then the, the second one is actually film and production, awesome. which is another, and th those are our master classes to actually get, get it started. And then uh, hopefully fall of uh, 2022, we'll actually have uh, a, a steady set of courses that will start to lead to eventually a film school and a film degree out of the country of Belize. Excellent. Wow. That's great. And that, that begs so the question, what is your opinion of the general state of film and filmmaking? Mm. Of general. Wow. Like that's, the, that's, your general <laughs> opinion of the state of film and filmmaking. Yeah. Great question, Rob. I, I, it, it is, but I, I don't know if I'm really qualified to answer that. So bad question, Rob. The film I commissioner say, believes no, no, not no. qualified. <laughs> yeah, but but. Oh, man. My, this would be my take and, and in my humble opinion, just let, let, let me say. The stories, and, and again, let me preface this from a, coming from a Belizean person's standpoint. The world of film is so large and, and can be overwhelming at times. The beauty of it is now because of all the different platforms that, that are afforded to us, we can tell our own stories. And if, if I had a, a criticism uh, on the industry before, I didn't believe that enough stories were being told from different points of view. Um, right. One of the things that I have uh, tried to really champion in, in, in the country of Belize is that this is the way for us to get our story out. I believe if it's told by us as Belizeans is the best way to do it. Um, what I do like now that I see, like I said, because of the, the multiple or the, the more platforms that are there, you are getting more stories being told by the people who the stories are actually about. And that's what I love or I can appreciate more about the industry. Now, with saying that, sometimes the quality of the product that's out there isn't as good, but I just believe that that is only a, um, where we are in the evolution. That will change fairly quickly. Great. So, that's great. I don't know if that answers your question. I, I exactly. think you hit the nail on the head perfectly, Nigel. Right. And again, that's we really appreciate you taking the time to come out on here with us. No, oh, man, thank you. For, and thank you for, for what you want to uh, do for, for us. Me. Thanks for coming and on. It helps our show. Yeah. And thanks for, that's a great idea. Get everybody no, we, on. We will coordinate that. We'll coordinate oh, that. And, you know, it, 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 it will be a special show. Let's just say that. Because I would it, say it so, yeah. Some, 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 some good names and good topics. And then that's it'll give me a chance to show off Belize as well outside of my office. You can show off Belize Absolutely. anytime you want. All right. We will do thanks it for lot, you. Robert. Oh, thank you for everything. No. You take care best. of yourself and stay peaceful, right. Nigel. You too. All right, Bob. You're, you're the care, best. Man. Thanks, Bye -bye. Nigel. Too. Yeah. Bye now. Bye. Well, Bob, a film commissioner for a country uh, just joined the show and uh, relayed some of his experiences. And I thought, uh, well, I don't think I know that uh, I'm feeling pretty encouraged about the future. Uh, yeah, because he's so well spoken and he's got his fingers on the pulse. He's really really a good man. I mean, real. And, and we're, we were blessed to have him on. I'll tell you that right now. 
Absolutely. So, folks, stay tuned for that special. The film police special with some uh, cast of characters and stars. It's coming and it's coming soon. It sure the sports is. show with Bob Spino signing off. This is Rob. <laughs>